Hello and welcome! This is Rufo Monger, my friends. In this video today, I want to showcase you cameos in Mortal Kombat 1. Specifically, just to give you an idea of just how much cameos changed the game. Because they're a very big deal and the most defining part of the gameplay in Mortal Kombat 1. Now, on the base level, cameos, can they let you get bigger and better combos? Sure, yeah, of course they can. So let me give you an example combo here. So this combo you're about to see, only possible thanks to the assist I have here, the Scorpion Cameo. He's gonna be a big help here. Couldn't have done him without him, right? And 45%, uh, not bad at all, right? That's, that's a good chunk of damage. So yeah, cameos and all the things they can do, you can get all sorts of cool and wacky combos. That's great. But cameos and the assists that they provide are so much more than just cool combos that do good damage. Doing good damage is great, but there's a lot of situations that'll help you either obtaining damage you couldn't otherwise get, or say preventing you from getting damage to begin with, that are really cool. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five examples of things cameos let you do that are just absolutely crazy and absolutely broken. So let's start with Darius. Darius, he's one of the sillier cameos in the game, right? Uh, and by design, He's a bit of a silly dude, and he's cool in that he has a lot of tandem offense with you. And one of the cool things you can do here is just his regular cameo call. Basically extends whatever combo you're going to do, no matter what it is. So I can go for something that's kind of fairly basic here. And you see that Darius kick, no matter how long, how involved the combo is, he will always kind of just put an enemy in a state of suspended animation. And it's great because... You can do whatever you want to do here. You don't have to do uh, a regular call, right? You don't have to uh, commit to an animation. It's what we call an ambush assist, where you can be doing anything you want and you can call them. So it extends any combo and that's good, but it gets a lot more devious than that. You see, uh, he does have the sunset flip here where you give him the old alley-oop because you're a big pal, right? And what he does after the fact, it doesn't combo, but he sets up shop right after and then he goes for a big old bounce. Okay, cool. But like, oh, well, I'll just block that nonsense, right? And fair enough, you absolutely can, but we can make it very difficult on you. So let's use that same combo example here. Oh, okay, so we can hit our float state here with the kick and then give him the old alley-oop and still set up shop. What can I do with that? So did you catch that? Hit low, then hit overhead. And it's about as tricky as it looks. You can make it very difficult. Why? Because you can choose how long he's gonna delay. You can let him fire off right away. You can actually let him fire off right away. But if you hold the cameo button, he'll delay slightly as long as you hold and he'll delay that overhead. So while Darius is doing his thing here and he's setting up shock, I can go low overhead, or say, if you think you're fast enough to block both, I can just simply, you know, not do the low, right? Let's let him do the overhead. Actually, I can delay as much as I'd like. You know, I don't gotta play your game, you gotta play mine. So instead, I'll just hold delay, and while you're worrying about block and high low, I'll just command grab you instead, right? So all sorts of gimmicks, all sorts of gigas, uh, not the least of which is while he's setting up shop, you can do like a double overhead, right? So while he's behind you and you can't do too much about him, you can now say, okay, is it gonna be low high, high high, nothing and get thrown or whatever mix ups you want, right? So Darius is the character, you get your combo in sure, but afterwards he's setting up shop and he's got an overhead that is definitely coming and, well, maybe, if you delay it, maybe it's not coming, right? And if it connects, you're gonna get bounced and you're gonna get comboed again, right? So that's one of those really cool things about just cameos as a whole, right? It's not so much just about maximizing the combo damage. This is setting up potentially a further combo with a very scary mix-up. Now, this next one is gonna be more mundane, but it's no less as powerful. So let's look at this matchup here. Sindel, Johnny Cage. Sindel is a character what throws fireballs really, really good. That's part of the main game plan. Johnny is a character without fireballs, 
so it has nothing to do but to earn his way in. So once he gets past like all the landmines of all these like instant air fireballs, he gets his big reward, right? But Sindel has Frost and Frost can do a thing or two about that. Not the least of which she can help. She'll give you a full screen low freeze. Uh, she'll give you her own ice ball so you can play Sub-Zero Light. And also, by the way, in case you don't know, you can throw people into these ice balls and then get combos after the fact. So that's another little trick. It's not what we're talking about, but it's a very powerful trick. Now we're gonna talk about something as boring as boring can be, yet it's still super good. So she has this attack where she just charges at you, right? Doesn't do that much damage. But uh, the idea is we're wanting to get blocked. Why? So Johnny Cage has gone past the landmines here. He finally worked his way in. And now we don't like that. We don't want that. So we'll do Sindel here, call that cameo. And look how far he just got pushed out. Like he blocked, sure, but whatever. We're getting all that space back. And once we got that space back, time to throw more fireballs. You gotta rework your way back in. And the second you dare try to work your way back in, I'm gonna push you all the way back out, right? And that's one of the very interesting things about this cameo. It's less getting the hit. If you get the hit, sure, whatever, great, awesome, right? But for someone who's looking to throw a lot of fireballs, Frost is just really strong in the way of like, no, sir, please step back behind the line. You earned your way back in, now you gotta go all the way back out. So mundane, sure, but very powerful. So here's a classic from the betas you might have seen, but it's still very applicable in this game. That is the unblockable setup. So Jax, his ground pound is truly unblockable and very powerful in that he doesn't care who he hits. He'll hit you just the same, right? Uh, and say, you know, you're in a setup where you're gonna wake up and there's an unblockable move coming your way. Well, you're gonna do your best to say, get off the ground, right? But what happens if that avenue is not available to you? Well, then you get what is effectively a very hard to deal with setup here. So we're gonna use Natara, do a combo called Jax, and basically we're gonna put smoke between a rock and a hard place. So there's the setup in a nutshell. The unblockable hits basically like a couple of frames right before you would land on their head and you being airborne, very safe from the unblockable. And how do you deal with that? So we could set smoke the block, but the unblockable hits. So naturally that's not gonna work so good. What if we have him set to do one of his armored moves, right? Well, let's try that out. That didn't work out so good, did it? The armor shirt went off, I guess, right? But uh, it didn't do much because he got hit twice within like just the span of a couple frames. So the single hit armor just isn't enough. So how do you deal with these setups? Well, I guess the answer is uh, very carefully. Uh, the real answer is honestly, a lot of characters, you gotta eat crap. Some characters with exceptionally fast reversals might stand the chance, but most of the cast, uh, it's your fault basically for getting hit. That's uh, the kind of game this is. Now, generally you're not gonna get like tons and tons of damage off an unblockable setup, but it is there and it is very powerful. So you gotta watch out for that kind of stuff. Now, another crazy thing about certain cameos is they give you teleports. And the thing about the teleport is it interrupts you no matter what you're doing. They will try to best to catch you. Sometimes you're just not there to be caught, right? You gotta be grounded. But the really cool thing is, since it interrupts whatever you're doing, like say I'm going for my uh, ground blast here, right? Kung Lao can say no and try to save Rain from getting hit with the ground blast, right? Which not something you actually wanna do, right? But certain situations like say Shao Kahn's overhead. So General Shao, his overhead is big and slow. And it does have a can follow up, but it doesn't do that much damage. And uh, you can't do like many other moves and like cancel out into an assist call or anything. You have to commit. Simple as that. It has to be committed to. And if you get blocked, you better believe you're done like dinner. So potentially losing the game for a 15% overhead, maybe not worth it. But what if we can get a lot more damage than that 15%? Since teleports interrupt you no matter what you're doing, even moves that normally you can't override into an assist call, the teleport will take you out of it. So now, General Shao, off that overhead. Oh, 
all of a sudden he's getting a lot more damage, you know? So now it's a lot more worth the risk. 30% versus 15% double the damage, right? And that's all thanks to our handy teleport. And there's a lot more weird interactions you can do with that. So say Garrus' time stop, right? Has the animation where he'll bop you in the head. But once again, teleports interrupt you no matter what. So instead of bopping him in the head, if we call the teleport, it takes us out of it. And then we have what is effectively his EX time stop, which you normally have to spend meter for. You get it for free because the animation has been canceled. Now, all of a sudden, we got a good chunk of change here. Uh, much more damage than the one, two, and the special would have given us normally, right? And that is thanks to the teleport interrupting us. So, Motaro is another character with a teleport here. And the teleports, once again, they let you sequence break basically everything, right? So, even the common throw. So, throws don't do too much damage, but if we can sequence break with a teleport, we can get a decent amount more. So there we go. Uh, a good deal more than just the regular throw, right? And that's all thanks to this uh, animation being sequence broken by the teleport at the right time. So we can just meet them on the other side and keep kicking their head in. So if you thought the throw ended at the throw, no, we're going to keep going. So just keep that in mind. Teleports on top of, well, just the use of teleporting, which is handy no matter how you can swing it, right? The fact that they can break animations, break sequences in this game and create all sorts of wacky situations is something you should definitely try and test out for yourself. As far as cameos go, Striker's very interesting. He's basically custom made for people who love mix-ups and pressure, like by itself. He has a low, like a, a true low, right? And he also has a true overhead. So if you're deficient in say mix-up, he will give you mix-up just by himself. And say if you already have mix-up, like say Rain here can go overhead, overhead, then he can go overhead low. So he can make tricky characters even trickier than they already are. But what the real cool thing is, is that he can just straight up arrest you. So it doesn't do much damage, but it's a couple things. For one, if the enemy already happens to be in the air, it will restand them no matter where they are, which is good. And it restands them with a lot of advantage frames. So the enemy rain's gonna arrest me right here, right? And now we're going to both hold up and look who jumps first. The enemy rain jumps like almost a full second before I'm able to just act and react. Now, just FYI, I can still block even if I'm stuck, right? It's not a capture state. It's not like a sub-zero freeze or anything like that. Uh, I can still block high, low, all that. I just can't move. All I can do is sit and block. And now let's logic that out. If I restand you after a combo, and all I can do is sit and block and wait. Well, then someone say an overhead or someone with a low, they might be doing pretty all right at this point because now they're helpless and they got to start guessing. And now, hey, wait a second. Sure enough, you can do exactly that, right? You can do your whole combo and then end with that reset and then the opponent has to guess. So from this very range here, I can tap you with my overhead. So that immediately says, okay, I got to start guessing here. And if they can reach me from the overhead and I can't move, I can block high, sure. And exactly when you're worried about blocking high is exactly when I'm going to go low on you because that's another option. And say you're paralyzed with indecision, right? I don't even know which way is going to come. Like high, low, I can only guess and hope. Oh, I can just throw it instead, right? So Striker, if you love mix-up, if you love pressure, Striker... If you're willing to sacrifice a few points of damage in a combo, can end every combo in a restand and give you an opportunity to 50-50 the opponent on the spot. And they really have no recourse other than they got to guess because they're under arrest. And when you're under arrest, that means you got to start guessing overhead and low. Dirty? Hey, it's a dirty game. So hopefully that gives you an idea of just what's possible with cameos. Like, yeah, some cameos, they're easy, right? Oh, Sub-Zero helps you freeze. If you can freeze people, you can probably combo people. So hey, that's great and all. Thank you very much, Cameo Sub-Zero, for letting me get the extra cool combo. But there's so many like setups and gimmicks and gigas. Cameos are a lot more than just calling in a dude to help you get a few more percent damage in a combo. 
And hopefully this video has helped you understand just some of the ideas and some of the power behind the cameo system because it's the lifeblood of what Mortal Kombat 1 is and it's really, really cool and interesting. That said though, hope you learned a lot, but we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.